Welcome to online worship here at Holy Cross Lutheran Church. This is the last weekend of September, the weekend of September 27th. We are glad that you're worshiping with us online. We also want to remind you of the in-sanctuary worship opportunities that are available Saturday night, Sunday morning, and also Monday evening. We begin our worship now by inviting God's presence as we speak his name. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me at home or wherever you are watching this as we confess our Christian faith, speaking the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today's scripture readings are from the epistle of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant 
being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, <clears throat> as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. This is the word of the Lord. Today's gospel reading is from the gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at verse 28. What do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward he changed his mind and went. And he went to the other son and said to him, The same. And he answered, I'll go, sir, but then did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We welcome Pastor Allersmeyer to share God's Word with us this morning, or today, whenever you are watching this. And he's a bit frightening. I don't quite know um, how to pray about this, but let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the many gifts that you give to us, most of all the gift of your Word. Lord, we, we thank you for the speaking and the hearing of your word. And Lord, as we listen now to your word proclaimed, we ask your blessings, your favor, your insight, your stirring of your spirit in us as we hear and receive that word. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts of communication and proclamation given to Pastor Allersmeyer. Lord, we pray your anointing and your spirit's presence upon him as he shares this word today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Goff. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are going to talk about having the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is talked about in Philippians chapter 2. And my question for you this day is, are you masked? Are you masked? I hope you realized that I was masked when I came up here this morning, or whenever you are listening to this, this proclamation of God's Word. But what I did was illustrate an ancient Greek custom, an artistic expression where in their theater, the actors would stand behind large masks and they would speak their lines. In fact, the term for that, I think you'll recognize it, gives um, way to our English word, hypocrite. A hypocrite was someone in Greek theater who stood behind a mask and then would deliver 
his lines. My question for you this day is, are you masked? What are the coverings that you place over yourself? What are the masks out of which or behind which we speak? And this is tied into Philippians chapter 2, where the Apostle Paul talks of us having the mind of Christ. Philippians is a joyful epistle. There's not a lot of controversy there. But there was one thing that Paul wanted to remind the Christians of Philippi over and over. And that was that even though they were citizens of Rome, and that was a tremendous identity, that was a tremendous mask behind which they could speak and act in the world, that ultimately their identity was grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that they identified as Christ followers. Sin has put into our lives a fear of being open, of being vulnerable, of sharing who you are. In fact, I remember reading in a book once, I'm, I'm afraid of telling you who I am because if I do, you may not like who I am. And so consequently, as a result of sin, we not only lock our doors and uh, hide behind protection of various kinds, but we also hide behind masks. I'm cool. I'm funny. I'm very serious about things. Whatever persona we seek to project to the world, my word, it seems as though we do not have the courage or take the opportunity to truly talk with one another. And in these troubled times, more than any other time perhaps in our lifetime, we need to get out from behind the mask of, I am a Democrat, I am a Republican, I am this, I am that. I hang out here with these people. No, I hang out here with those people. We need really to come out from behind those masks and relate to each other honestly, especially we as Christians bearing the name of our identity in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's three reasons I read about in this task where we have the, the courage, we have the, uh, we have the wherewithal to step out from behind our masks and to talk with one another as Christ followers. The first one is just to recognize that we possess power. We possess power to strip away the masks, to relate to one another. Paul says in this text, we have encouragement in Christ. We have participation in the Spirit. The biblical understanding of what we call sanctification, the walk in the Christian life, is not that, oh, we're going to try higher and harder and we're going to be more Christ-like, but rather it is the reality that Christ leads the way. The Holy Spirit empowers us. And consequently, even in our Christian walk, we are simply following the lead powered by our wonderful God. Praise God, the old hymn goes, from whom all blessings flow, all blessings including the power to follow Him. We follow Him because we also possess a pattern, a pattern of behavior, of interaction with one another. In our text, it says it this way, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. And as you heard Pastor Goff read Philippians chapter 2, it went into the, in very short uh, form, a, a, a hymn, actually. It was an ancient Christian hymn of Jesus' ministry. How he did not consider equality with God something that he could grasp at, but instead he emptied himself. He became humble, even to the point of death, death on a cross. And you can almost imagine those early Philippian Christians singing this hymn as it went on 
uh, to see that uh, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That is the pattern for the Christian life. It's found in the cross of Christ. It recognizes that Christ, though he possessed everything, voluntarily laid aside those powers. We call this his state of humiliation. He could have done whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted to. But being truly human, he also did not... um, did not force, you might say, his godliness upon the situations of his life. He hungered, he thirsted, he wept, he was truly human and laid aside those powers that were his because he was truly God as well. What does that say to us in terms of the pattern of our lives? We have a lot of privilege in our world. We have a lot of opportunity. We have a certain sway and a certain amount of power in our respective uh, circles of influence. But Christ followers are those who do not press their advantage. They follow one who humbled himself to the point of death. And they recognize that uh, as we pick up the cross and follow our Savior Jesus Christ, we will sometimes surrender what rightfully we could insist upon in terms of treatment from other people, in terms of of opportunities or whatever. We will lay those aside because it is more important to us to take away the mask, to be truly human, to be truly Christ followers, and to follow in his path of sacrificial service and love. Jesus said it this way, a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teachers. So one of the secrets of joy for the Philippian congregation and for us today is to recognize that we possess not only the power of God, but also we possess a pattern that of the sacrificial life, death, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Also, as I look at this text, I recognize that we possess, we possess a purpose, a reason why we are in this world. I think one of the saddest things that I observe in the world today. I read about it a lot. Every now and then someone will talk with me about this is, I just don't know why I'm here. I don't know, and you hear it sometimes even with older people, I don't know why I'm still here. Why doesn't God take me? What is my purpose? Well, Paul articulates it very clearly and powerfully to the Philippians and to us. We who would create our own purposes, who would hide behind our masks of uh, I'm this or I am that. Paul says, therefore, and that's a big word, after talking about Jesus, the power we have in Jesus, the pattern we have in Jesus, Paul says, therefore, one of my favorite words in the scriptures, because now on the basis of that, something follows. And he says that we are to shine in the world. In fact, it says it this way. It says that we are to shine as lights in the world because we are blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. Jesus said it this way in the Sermon on the Mount, in the same way, let your light shine before others. Have you ever thought of your life as a witness, as a beacon, as a light of hope and of encouragement to other people? The world's kind of dark these days. Things are very difficult. Don't you love it, that person who will just drop the pretense, drop the mask, and they will just simply encourage you as one human being to another, especially as one Christ follower to another. 
In the same way, let your light shine before others. And I love the way this ends when Jesus says, so that they may see your good works. Doesn't stop there. And give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That is the ultimate purpose for our existence, to give glory to our Father who is in heaven. That is what we will spend eternity doing, glorifying our great God who is in heaven. That's our identity. That is the reason for our existence. That is our power. That is the pattern of our lives. And that is God's great purpose for us. So my dear friend in Christ, we live in a world of masks. We certainly do. And in no way do I want to imply that we take away the masks that um, protect others as we go about in the midst of a pandemic. But recognize as well that we all place other masks before us in our lives. And that through the power, through the pattern, and through the purpose of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, we can drop these. We can be unmasked and live and relate to one another as what Luther called little Christs, those who hold up the Lord of the universe, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray now that we might drop the pretense, that we might drop the masks that we put up before the world, and that we might do the most honest thing I think anyone will do this week, and that is to take away, to stand unmasked before our God as we confess our sins. Please pray with me. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you that I am by nature sinful and unclean, that I have sinned against you by thought, word and deed, by what I have done, and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbors as myself. I justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for these sins and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy. And for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. That was my confession of sins, and I trust it was yours as well. Having removed that mask of pretense of sin and laid yourself bare before the God of the universe. I now have the privilege to declare to you the greatest news you'll ever hear, that upon this your confession, I, by virtue of the office that I have been called to, an ordained servant of the Word of Christ, I can announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I can proclaim to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We are so thankful as a congregation for your continued faithfulness in the giving of your offerings. We want to give thanks to the Lord for that and for the gifts that are extended for the continuation of the ministry, just as you have been doing. You can bring your offerings to church with you when you come. You can mail them in. You can give online. You can drop them by the church office. Uh, we thank you for that continued support and that expression from you of your thanks to the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we do give you thanks for the multitude of blessings that you give to us in our lives. Thank you for your provisions for us daily. Thank you for the unexpected gifts that we receive that are helpful, especially at times of need or at times when we're concerned about how we are gonna daily care for our lives. Lord, your blessings come in abundance. And Lord, we give you thanks for all that we receive, and we offer up these offerings as an expression of our thanks to you for all that we have, all that we are, is yours alone. We give you but a portion thereof. Lord, we ask that your blessings would be multiplied as they are received here in this congregation for the extension and spreading of the gospel through the ministry of this church and school. We commend this into your care in Jesus' name. Lord, we also recognize today that in many and varied ways, we do wear masks. Not only those that, that protect us and others around us from this pandemic, but in the way we go about our daily lives. And yet, Lord, no matter what masks we might wear or how many we might wear, you see through all of that. Lord, we thank you that ultimately you have given us the true identity that we need in you. Our identity is in Christ. And because of that, Lord, we have no reason to, for shame. We have no reason to hide ourselves. We have no reason to continue to wear those masks. Lord, I pray that your people, all of us, would daily recognize that our identity is in you and that we'd be encouraged to live our life for, for you. Lord, to that end, we pray that you would move in each one of us to be accepting and affirming of one another, that we would not use labels, we would not speak words that are demeaning, we would not make judgments we are not in a position to make. Help us to see one another through Christ. Lord, we ask your blessings upon our lives and the lives of those that we daily interact with. We ask your blessings upon all who may be sick or hospitalized, those who are preparing for surgeries, those who are recovering for, from surgeries, those who are homebound, those who are not quite ready to leave their home yet in light of this pandemic. Lord, for all those who may be struggling at, with physical wellness, emotional, mental wellness, Lord, we ask for your hand of comfort and encouragement upon them. Lord, we lift all of this up to you as we boldly pray the words that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Allersmeyer, a closing thought, please. Are you masked? God be praised in Jesus Christ. We can toss aside those masks. We have His power. We have His pattern. We have His purpose in our lives to love and to relate to one another, seeing Christ in the other as we practice being Christ in their lives. So receive now the blessing of this great God. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Watch and pray. On Sunday, told me just what to say. On Sunday.